Peshem Hashem Na'aseh V'Nasliach. Welcome everyone back to our weekly shiur on the parasha with the derush of the Zer Hashem Shon. May the zechut of the Zer Hashem Shon be a meditation for all of Am Yisrael and bring us Yeshuot V'Nachamot Be'Garov. This shiur is especially dedicated for the safety of uh, all of Am Yisrael, especially those that are in Eretz Yisrael, Tzavah Ganad Yisrael, um, those that are uh, captives, may Hashem have mercy on all of us and bring them home to their families. Those that are injured, may Hashem give them a refuah shelema, refuah tanefesh, refuah taguf. May Hashem give um, peace and tranquility all over the world and give patience to all those families that have suffered through this ordeal. May Hashem bring all of us geulah shelema bimhera v'yamenu and the zechut of the zera shimshon. For the refuah shelema of kol cholam Yisrael and those that are injured, especially Malkiel ben Soraya. And Meir Ben Parvin and Skyler Bat Flora. Okay, so Parashat Bereshit, starting from the beginning. It says, there's a famous Midrash that says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world with the Midah of Rachamim. That was mixed with the Midah of Justice, Din, or Emet. Meaning, God created the world with the attribute of mercy, mixed with the attribute of truth, Emet, and Justice. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to create the world, it says in the beginning of Bereshit, Bereshit bara Elohim et ha-shamayim ve'et ha-aretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But for, for recognition of God in this pasuk, is pronounced with the word Elohim. Elohim, anytime you see the word Elohim in the Torah, it represents din, it represents, it represents Judgment, resent emet. Judgment, pure judgment is not about being, you know, one way or another. There's only one judgment. There's only one truth. There's only one way it could go. So in the beginning, Hakadosh Baruch Hu it says, "Bara Elokim et Hashemayim beTaretz." God Elokim created the heavens and the earth. However, later the pasuk is quoted saying, "Be'om asot Hashem Elokim Eretz v'Shamayim." On the day that Hashem Elokim made Eretz v'Shamayim, the land and the heavens, earth and the heavens. In this pasuk, it says, "God Yud Kei Vav Kei," Hashem's name, Amonai, Elokim, and then Elokim created the heavens and the earth. Basically, in this pasuk, we have both pronunciations of God's name, Yud Kei Vav the 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 name of Hashem that we do not pronounce, and we have Elokim, right? And the name of Hashem Yud Kei Vav comes first. Beyom Asot Hashem Elokim Eretz V'Shamayim on the day that Hashem Elokim created the heavens and the earth. Therefore. Rashi says, you know why it's like this? Why is it that in the beginning in the Bereshit it says that Elohim created the world? And then later it says, you know who created the world? It was Hashem Elohim. <clears throat> Yud Kei Vav Kei Elohim. Yud Kei Vav Kei represents Chesed. Represents kindness and mercy. It's pretty much the opposite of Din. The opposite of judgment. Because judgment, there's no Chesed or kindness in judgment. There is no mercy in judgment. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. But judgment is good for one person and it could be not good for another person. But judgment is judgment. It's clear cut. There's no mercy in it. There's no, there's no room for rachamim. Mean, fair is fair. You know, you lose, you lose. You win, you win. Chesed and rachamim is what Hashem basically is make everybody happy. Even if it's not clear cut, Fair, so to speak. But that's what chesed and kindness is. 
And the Midrash says, why is it like this? Why is it that in the beginning of Bereshit it says, in the beginning, Elohim created the world. And then later on we say that, oh no, it was Hashem Elohim. So the Midrash says, first God wanted to create the world with the Midah, with the attribute of judgment. Emet. Allah the Mahshava, this is what God wanted to do in thought. He thought, I'm going to create the world, create the world with the attribute of judgment. Emet, the world has to stand on truth. But then he saw that the world is not going to survive. Like that, it won't survive. And because he said it's not going to survive on judgment alone, he said, if I, if I, if I make the world on judgment alone, I'll have to destroy it in no time. They're going to make mistakes. Everyone's got to get... There's, there's going to be punishment for all the mistakes. And some punishments are going to probably be the death penalty. So if, if, if I create, create the world with the midah of judgment, the world won't survive. On that, the Zer Shimshon has a very good question. He asks like this. The other Abba, the opposite is true. <clears throat> If the world was created with the midah, the attribute of din, of judgment, there would be no wicked people in the world. And if everyone was righteous, why would we think that the world wouldn't survive? Imagine. A world that people would be too afraid to make mistakes. Simple. Because people would have caught on to the fact that you do wrong, you're punished. That, Quickly. That won't work for people that do inadvertent mistakes, unintentional mistakes. Because they, they, they're going to be punished too. Not like as severe, but more minor. And a, First of all, I could say that those that would make inadvent, inadvertent mistakes might have not been punished at all. It's actually inadvertent. Number two, of why? That is justice. Justice is, he, didn't, he tripped, he tripped, fell, and hit someone in the head. But then that's the attribute of kindness. That's why is that kindness? Know. How is it justice that a guy just tripped and fell, hit someone in the head? It's justice to punish that guy. Where do you live? In a world of justice. <laughs> well, that, that's still, it, Are you it, Batman? <laughs> No, he would get sued, but not punished. That's a punishment in and of No, that's a crookedness of the law in itself. Not a punishment. It's, 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 it's not. I wouldn't call that punishment. I didn't do anything wrong. The guy tripped, hit someone. You know what I'm saying? It was totally inadvertent. So that was my first answer. I would say maybe the guy doesn't have a punishment. Or if he does, it wouldn't be as severe of a punishment. It's just, you know, it's inadvertent. What do you want? Right? And that would be justice itself. But, I'll even do one better. I'll even do one better. Have you ever, um, let's see. Have you ever, by mistake, jumped off a cliff? Have you? No. No. Right. I would say, I would say that would be very, very rare. Very, if any. Right? What I'm trying to say is everybody knows that a cliff has a big drop. Right? And if the world was created with the midah of judgment, everybody would know what the calamity of making those mistakes quote unquote was I don't think that many people would make those mistakes right if you live in a world that strictly speaking if you make those mistakes the punishment is to follow right away you'd live a very careful life we don't live in that kind of world so we can't imagine it but if we did yeah if we knew that listen it's a world of strict judgment so the cliff is 20 feet over there, 
I'm going to be standing here 50 feet away. I won't even get close to it. Because I know how this works. So with the Averot, with sin, it would be the same. People would think, listen, it's a world of judgment. And Hashem says, has said, don't do this or don't do that. I'm going to stay 50 feet away from that thing that I'm not supposed to do. Because I know the moment I do it, there is no way of getting away with it. There is no way of nothing happening. Unfortunately, there's people out there that break Shabbat. Right? Inadvertently, on purpose, not knowingly, they don't know what Shabbat really is, so on and so forth. Right? In the time that there was strict judgment from the Bedin, we didn't find any that many people that broke Shabbat. Because they knew it has the death penalty. It's that simple. People did break Shabbat, unfortunately, you know, inadvertently by accident. For that, they had to bring a kapara, they had to bring a korban to the Beit HaMikdash and make an atonement for it. Right? There was a way to atone for it. But even in the atonement was, was a process. Nobody wanted to go through that. You know what I'm saying? People were careful. Because they knew that there's a process to it. You can't just do it. So the Zerah Shimshon is asking, why not create the world with the Midah of Din? We would have a very good world. People would just be good because they would be too afraid to make mistakes because they knew that retribution is right behind the mistake. Right? Like, during the time of the Beit HaMikdash, Tzarat, the skin, the, 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 the spiritual skin disease that a person would get for speaking Lashon Hara. Right? Negative speech about somebody else. It was immediate. I guarantee you people very, very, very careful with Lashon Hara those days. Because they knew. The moment it comes out of their mouth, bloop, there's a spot on their house. There's a spot on their clothes. Then I don't fix the problem. The spots are all over their body. They have to go in the desert, live far away from everyone, and they have to announce from everybody that walks by them, Oh, I spoke Lashon Aram and Rasha. I'm Tameh, don't come near me. Guaranteed that guy wouldn't make that mistake twice. True or not true? So yes, people still made the mistake. But not as much as we do today. True or not true? Definitely not as much as we do today. So the Zerash Mishon has that point. If there was strict judgment and retribution, we would definitely have, in some ways, a cleaner world. Right? Ve'yesh lomar. So how do we answer this? Shari Shaninu, we learned, al shulosha devarim ha'olam omed, the world stands on three pillars. What are those three pillars? Torah, Avodah, Ugmilut Chasadim. The world stands on three pillars. Torah, Avodah, which is service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and Gemilut Chasadim, Chesed. These are the three pillars of the world. It says, Gemilut Chasadim. One of these pillars is Gemilut Chasadim. And there is another saying that is in Gemara Sota, page 14. And the Gemara says, you have to, a person has to always learn, the halachta bidrachav. You should always mimic HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Always go in God's ways. Always see how HaKadosh Baruch Hu handles the world and try to be the same. Meaning, you have to say to yourself, Mahu rachum, just like God is merciful, so I shall be merciful. Just like God is patient, so shall I be patient. That's what we have. We have to learn from the best. We have to always copy HaKadosh Baruch Hu in His midot, in His attributes. Hashem is a chesed, God of kindness. I have to be kind. Don't think to yourself, I want to be like this guy or that guy. No. Compare yourself to HaKadosh Baruch Hu Himself. How does God handle, handle the world and people? You handle the world and people just the same. People go doing wrong things all the time. People go not believing in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, saying all the worst things about God. Oh, where is God? Who is God? Da, 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 da. 
And they'll live for 90, sometimes 100 years. You know what you learn from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Patience. Sometimes you think to yourself, is God patient? Oh, wow. This guy's walking around with blasphemy day and night. No punishment. Easy life. Instead of being angry at that, be happy. Say, if God is so patient with these people, how much more so God will be patient with us? Hashem has patience. It's patience. So you learn from that patience. And tell yourself, yeah, so-and-so said Lashon Hara about me. Am I going to say anything about it? No. You know why? Because day in, day out, unfortunately, people say, Lashon Hara about Kadosh Baruch Hu, and it doesn't do much to them. So just like he's an Avar Rahman, also I can, I can have mercy. All right, so they said Lashon Hara about me. Maybe it was right. Maybe they're right. Maybe I do have a crooked nose. Uh -huh. Maybe I do need that nose job. So what? Let them say it. So what? So he says, we have these two, the two, this two, we have these two points of information. Number one is that the, the world stands on three pillars, one of which is Gemilut Hasadim, one of which is kindness. And then we have another saying that says, go in the ways of God. Mahu Gomel Hasadim, cling to Kadosh Baruch Hu. Just like he does chesed, you too should chesed. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu would not mix the attribute of mercy into the creation, into the fabric of the creation of the world, no person could do chesed. You know why? Because when we would have the opportunity to do chesed, who do you learn from to do chesed? Yeah. And you would tell yourself, Hashem doesn't do chesed. That guy made a mistake. Poof. He was stricken with lightning on the spot. He was bechalel shabbat. Boom. His car blew up. That guy was eating shrimp. Choked on it. Chas v'shalom. Arminan. And when people would see that in that strict attribute of judgment, right? They would be like, oh, God rules the world with emet. So he feels this person should not be having trip. Shouldn't have. If he did, he got his punishment, God forbid. This person should not have been mechalel Shabbat, breaking Shabbat. If he did, he got his punishment, God forbid. So a person would see that and say, just like God lives with the attribute of judgment, so do I live with the attribute of judgment. So, elderly 90-year-old fell on the ground, why should I help him up? Maybe he deserved it. Why should I do kindness? Why should I do chesed? God doesn't do chesed. There is no chesed and kindness in the world. The world is created with emet. And with emet, there is no way around it. If that person fell, he should have fell. Or else, why should he fall? If he fell, it means he deserved to fall. Why should I help him? Why should I get in the way of a met? Why should I get in the way of God's judgment? Imagine a world like that. Imagine a world where you see someone suffering and you go, huh, well, whatever the person's going through, I guess he deserved it. So why should I help them? I would be getting in the way of God's work. You know, by the way, there are, there are people that live like that. There are cults that live like that. There are cults that don't take their kids to hospitals, don't take their kids to, they don't use medical, nothing. This is what God wants. Huh? I don't know what they're called. They're, <laughs> but that's how they live. It's God's judgment. God does, but they don't understand. All of the medicine in the world, all the new technology in the world that saves lives is God's chesed. It's God's kindness for us to use. We should never need them. Right? But those things is for human beings to use. I remember when my rabbi one time gave us the example. Right? Imagine, which you don't have to imagine, again, there are people that actually, this is something that they, that there's cults that practice this. 
Women during childbirth refuse to use any, you know, uh, um, anesthetics. They refuse to use what's that? What's that shot? Epidural, epidural, if they need it, right? Why? Because they say this is the curse of Chava. It's the curse of Eve to have childbearing pains. Who am I to mess around with God's curse? God said that women have to suffer through it, so they have to suffer through it. That's that's just stupidity. Right? Yes, God said that this is the curse of Chava or whatever. But obviously, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu has put the, the, the anecdote in the world, that's his chesed. He wants human beings to be able to use it. Why should a mother lose her life in pain? Why should a mother die through child pain? Because, ah, oh, no, I'm listening. No. It's not what God wants. So he's saying, listen to this. It says, says, people would be roaming the world thinking, listen, God also rules the world with the midah of judgment and met with truth. So with truth, what would this truth and judgment bring to the world? Hatred. All it would cause is hatred. I can't help this guy because he probably deserves it. I can't help that person because they probably deserve it. That would only bring sin'ah into the world. So he's saying, either way, the world would not stand. The world wouldn't survive. Even though that people were, would be doing the will of Hashem, because the relationship between man and their fellow was not good, the world wouldn't survive. Because one of the one of the pillars as one of the pillars of creation is Gimilut Chasadim. So the Gimilut Chasadim has to be there. So if the Gimilut Chasadim wasn't there, the world wouldn't survive. So it would be a double negative. Create the world with emet and judgment. Yes, people would be tzaddikim according to Hashem's laws, meaning towards God, doing all the mitzvot towards God. But then because of that same truth, emet, and judgment, they wouldn't be doing chesed towards each other. So that pillar would be missing. And the world wouldn't stand. So he says, therefore, When God saw that the world cannot stand, Hashem mixed the midah of rachamim with the emet. And said, Bereshit bara elokimet hashamayim et in the beginning, God in Machshava wanted to create the world only with emet. And then it says, Beyom asot Hashem Elohim. Eretz Veshamayim. On the day that Hashem Elohim created the world. What happened? When did Hashem come into the picture? Not only in the picture, Hashem's name is before Elohim. Because Hashem said, I, I, I. No, you can't say Hashem realized. It's, it's a play on words. It, Hashem knows everything. It's a lesson for us. Hashem is trying to tell us, I want you to think as if I wanted to create the world with emet, but I changed, quote unquote, my mind. And I created it with rachamim and memet to show you that the world cannot stand without chesed. To show you that I couldn't create the world like that. As much as emet is good, as much as judgment is good and is fair, couldn't stand. Because I want you to understand the value of chesed and gimilut chasadim. Without it, the world wouldn't survive. What is, what, what, what is, what is, what is one thing that we say all the time? That Bnei Israel have a few signs that you can tell a Jew is a Jew. One of those signs of Am Israel is Rachmanim, merciful, merciful. No matter in what situation we're stuck in, we have mercy. We can't help it. It's in our blood. Because why? Because we're responsible for the world. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us the Torah, made us the responsible parties for the entire world. The world rests on Am Yisrael's shoulders. If we don't 
have chesed, if we don't, if we're not Rachmanim, the world can't stand. We need to show each other that we're Rachmanim. Not, I mean, look at, look at the chaos right now in the world. Kids were asking me, you know, when there's things that are bad that happen in other countries. Right? Israel's the first nation to send paramedics and help and soldiers to help the other nations in disastrous times. And kids are now asking me, like, where are those nations? To help Israel. Where are they? True. You have to give credit where credit's due. The United States has come out very strong in support of Eretz Israel and other countries as well, sending ammunition and so on and so forth. Right? But when Eretz Israel, when Israel reacts, it's ours. And there is human beings on the ground in that other country. There's troops on the ground helping in disastrous times. Risking their own lives in those disastrous times. And those countries that, edits and that, that Israel has helped, which I don't want to even name, <laughs> where are they? So you ask why? No reason to ask why. Because I, the Torah says, we are the ones who are Rahmanim. It don't matter which country it is, who it is, what's going on here. <laughs> Since then, we've helped, we've, Israel has sent troops to help people around the world that didn't want our help. Do you understand? When, when Israel was saving people from earthquake-stricken countries, disaster-stricken countries, I used to read quotes from different people. Like I wonder when that person under the rubble saw a hand reaching out to pick them up and pull them out of the rubble. If they ask, wait, 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 first tell me, are you a Jew? Nobody asked that. They saw a helping hand and they grabbed it. And you should know, one of the reasons, one of the reasons that we're in the situation we are today is because the enemies know this too. The enemies know that we're merciful. That's our mark. They know that we will never do the things they do. They know it. That's our sign. And we should be proud of that. That's our pride. We're, we're, we're the nation of Avraham Avinu. We're the nation of Avraham Avinu who had a tent that didn't even ask any questions. Who are you? Where do you come from? What do you, you know, you hungry? You thirsty? Come sit and eat. Have a drink. We're B'nai Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. That's who we are. And the Torah is saying, the Zerashim Shon beautifully puts it. Why is it that Hashem had in Machshava to create the world first with Deen and then change His mind? It would have been a great world. It would have been a wonderful world. No one would make any more mistakes. Everybody would be great. Everybody would be righteous and tzaddikim. Yes. You would be righteous and tzaddik towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But Hashem doesn't want that world. Because He created a world that stands on chesed. And if you're not going to be able to do chesed towards each other because you live in a world of pure judgment and emet, Hashem says, it's not worth it for me. I don't want that world. I don't want it. If you're not going to be able to give a helping hand to somebody else, it's not a world that's worth my time. It is time for Am Yisrael to really nurture this midah for ourselves. Do we need any more signs? Why should we have hatred towards each other? Why can't we have rachamim and rachmanut on each other? No matter what, no matter where we come from, you're religious, you're not religious, you're a lefty, you're a, you're a righty. Does it matter right now? Does it matter right now? Did anybody ask for the past week, if those that suffered in Eretz Yisrael in the past week, did anyone ask, are they Shomer Shabbat? Are they not Shomer Shabbat? Are they Reform? Are they conservative? Are they, are they, are they lefty? Are they righty? Are they, did, did you hear any of these questions being asked? Not at all. Not at all. You know why? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. 
Not for them and not for us. Not for the left, not for the right, not for the middle. It shouldn't matter. Am Yisrael is Am Yisrael, period. We're all the same color, we're all the same people, we're all from the same place. Nobody cares about us. Nobody cares about us. We only have each other. And when we go, when we go at each other's necks for stupid reasons like, I don't know, like it happened during Yom Kippur and before Yom Kippur, and oh, the religious, the, the, the anti religious people against the religious people. What? 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 Jew on Jew? Jews hating on other Jews? What? We don't have enough of our own enemies? Jew on Jews? Where's the kindness? Where's the Rahmanut? Where's the love between Am Israel? Where is it? Nothing makes HaKadosh Baruch Hu angrier than to see Jews not getting along. Nothing. Nothing. No one should have any doubts. And no one should ever have any questions. Like we didn't have any questions this week. Nobody asked. Nobody asked who. who were, they, were they religious? Those that are, are they religious? Are they not religious? Are they hired? Look, look at any of the news reports. Does it say two Shemar Shabbat people and two non Shemar Shabbat people were in? Does it say that? It doesn't say that at all. It just says Jews. You think Hitler, you think he cared who's a religious Jew, who's not a religious Jew, who's a reformed Jew, who's not a reformed Jew? You didn't care. He was the greatest teacher of Am Israel for unity. It was Hitler himself. He taught the Jews the most valuable lesson. And no matter what, you're a Jew. I don't care where you come from, what you believe in. You keep Shabbat, you don't keep Shabbat. You keep Yom Tov, you keep one day, you keep two days. You can, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You converted two generations ago, you're a Jew. And here we are again. Things that are happening that, that everyone's saying is since the Holocaust have not happened. We have to really look from within. We really have to look from within. We have to help our brothers and sisters to become better. Yes. But at the same time, if they don't believe in the same things that we believe in, whether they're more religious than us, they're less religious than us, it, will, it should not matter. It should not make a difference whatsoever. Because those paramedics, those Hatzala members in Israel that are running around, some of them risking, risking their lives, some of them already lost their lives. Go look around. One's got pe'ot, one doesn't have pe'ot, one's wearing a kippah, one's not wearing a kippah, one's religious, one's not. They don't care. It doesn't matter to them. We're all one nation and we only have each other. We only have each other. We don't have anybody else. You can see that we don't have anybody else, right? Has the past few days proven to you that we don't have anyone else? Already the news reports are coming in about, oh, well, you know, <laughs> you got to kind of like, it's like they have the audacity to even be weighing it. But that's the story of Am Israel. We only have HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the Torah Tenu HaKadosh And we have to listen to these things. Ha'olam Omed, the world stands on the three pillars. Torah, number one. Avodah, which is tefillah and prayer. Ugmilut chasadim and chesed. These are our three most important pillars that the entire world stands on. And these are the things that we have to, we have to emphasize on as Am Yisrael, as individuals and as a team. Work on learning more Torah. Work on learning more about who we are, where we come from. Work on learning more halachot. The laws of the Torah, what it means to be a Jew. How do I keep Shabbat better? How do I keep Shabbat better? How do I keep Yamim Tovim better? What can I do more to be more observant of the laws of the Torah? Things that I might not know. Avodah, tfilah. How can I pray better? 
If I pray only once a day, maybe I'll make it twice a day. If you're ladies, you're only obligated to two tefillot a day. If you do once a day, maybe add the other one. If you're Ashkenaz, you're only, I think, obligated one tefillah a day. But maybe I'll add some tehillim to that tefillah every day. Maybe I'll, 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 I'll add two halachot extra a day that I learn about halachot of Shabbat. Many of the Chachamim around the world right now are talking about learning halachot Shabbat. The laws of Shabbat. Shabbat is the protecting pillar of Am Yisrael. For many reasons. And the greatest thing we can do for our brothers and sisters here and around the world is to grab as many zechuyot merits that we can and, and do it in the name of safety of Am Yisrael everywhere. And the only way to do that is to add these things that I just said. Learn an extra halakha a day. Take upon ourselves a new mitzvah that we can, we, can, we can carry. That won't be too heavy for us. Do an extra chesed. Find out a way to do a little extra chesed someplace that you didn't think about before. Like we were talking before. Going to rallies and stuff like that. Okay, it might be helpful to show support. But it's not always the greatest thing a Jew can do. Better than that, believe me, is saying one tehillim. Better than that is doing one extra mitzvah. Better than that is to do a chesed. Going to an old age home and visiting an old lady that doesn't have anybody to visit them. Trust me. It's a thousand hours at a rally. That counts more than anything else. That saves more lives than anything else. Guaranteed. Accepting Shabbat a little early. Coming out of Shabbat a little later. So many things we can do to unite as Am Yisrael to do better. This year has to be a year that we as Am Yisrael say to ourselves and to each other, I want to be better. I want to be better. I want to grow. I don't want to be the same person. I want to be better. And that should be a zikhut for all of Am Yisrael. And bring Yeshuot v'nechamot besorot tovot أن جئولا شلما بمهرب يمنو أروح دونا لعالم أمين وأمين.